So I've been getting a lot of requests for showing exactly how I do my sales call. So in this video, I'm going to show you a live sales call with a residential roofing company. And as you will see in the actual call, this call was a little bit special. Normally on our sales calls, we do our spin questions first, then we do our presentations and talk about the details. But this specific prospect already knew quite a bit about us, as you will hear in the clip. So instead of doing the spin questions before the call, we basically dove immediately into the presentation. And we basically took the spin questions as we went through the call. And normally, I don't record our sales calls. But the reason why I recorded this one was because the prospect actually requested it. So if you guys like those types of recorded sales calls, then just let me know in the comments and I will definitely make sure to record more sales calls going forward. And we're still in talks with this specific prospect because I recorded this quite recently. So without further ado, let's just dive right into the sales call. But we, we fared pretty well. Gotcha. So it's, been, it's been good. All right. Yeah. yeah. The West know, Coast I... is, is trash. It's bad. Yeah, I saw some like horror videos of this hurricane. It looked pretty bad. It was it was it was pretty devastating actually. Uh, there's uh, a bunch of people that I know on the West Coast are starting to get power back, but there's um, there's going to be just months of rebuilding over there before uh, the majority of folks get their their power back, and then um, there's just stuff that's going to be, you know, bring in the bulldozers because it's not getting rebuilt. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, like living in that part of the world. It, 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 hurricane can just come whenever and just destroy everything. Yeah, it's, yeah, we yeah. pretty much have it dialed into somewhere in the middle, uh, the beginning to the middle of September through. Uh, basically, I think right about now we're fine. Uh, the the weather actually, it it's really strange in Florida how um, right around the end of September, the beginning of October, the weather just goes from in South Florida specifically where the hurricanes hit. It'll go from being 90 degrees down to 78 in like one or two days, and it just never goes back up. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, when it's really hot out in the end of September, you kind of know there's going to be a, a bad one coming. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to be stuck in one of those no. scary stuff. No. no. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's oh. it's pretty scary. I mean, the wind is <laughs> it, it it's uh. It's just one of those things where you're just sitting there and you're like, wow, that's really windy. Oh, it's still really windy. Yeah. It keeps being windy. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting how that, that works out. But um, yeah, no. So thanks for asking. Appreciate that. Uh, so tell me a little bit about, yeah. about you guys. I, you know, I, I uh, started clicking around on the internet, looking at different um, home improvement contractor websites and different things like that. And uh, I must've landed on, on a search category that you guys were targeting and you wound up in my newsfeed as a yeah. lead provider. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell yeah. me a little bit about how you guys work. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I have a, uh, a presentation that I normally go through on these calls. Sure. Um, so either we can just go through that right away uh, or if uh, you want us to explore and kind of identify like what you guys do in your business first and then dive into the presentation, that's completely up to you, but we can dive straight into the presentation if you want to. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go for it. Yep. Um, so let me share my screen here real quick. All right. So this uh, presentation is somewhat similar to the like to the one that we have in our video. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you. Yeah. I did. I did watch uh, the one on your video into its duration. So. All right. Uh, do you want me to go over it still, and I can do like the quick version, or uh... definitely the quick. I would say the quick version. I did watch the the entire uh, Vimeo version on your All right. uh, lead capture form specifically. Got you. All right. So we can basically save ourselves some time then if uh, if you want to uh, digest yeah. it uh, or just uh, do it a little bit shorter essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, in this presentation, we go over some results, uh, the problem in the roofing solar industry, the solution, our solution, and then finally our offer and pricing and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, have you seen all of like the case studies that we've done? Uh, or most I, I did. Yeah, I saw a handful yep. of the case studies, you know, a couple of the roofing contractors, uh, I guess PES. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with those guys. Uh, they, yep. they work in, in some, they don't come too far south into our market, but up in Florida and the Tampa area, they, they definitely, um, I'm hearing their name more frequently from other folks. Yeah, so PS and uh, Nolan's Roofing, we got PS as a uh, referral from Nolan's. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And uh, we're also working with um, some other companies in Florida as well. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Roof Commander, Normal Roofing, Wolf Roofing is another one. Mm -hmm. 
mostly uh, roofing companies. But all right, so we don't have to go over the case studies too much. Yeah, um, and, the, and the roofing contractors that you're working with um, in comparison, are, yep. are they mostly doing just traditional like roofing or are they storm more storm chasers? No, mostly not uh, insurance based, but they're mostly doing a retail, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's that's helpful to know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then normally, I don't know if I go over that in the uh, in that video that you watch, but more, normally like the problem in the roofing solar industry is mm -hmm. either do like offline or lead generation websites, Google, SEO, right. and so forth. Yeah. Um, and then directly to our complete solution, I think I went over that in pretty much detail in the video as well. Uh, do, do you mm -hmm. want me to reiterate this or go over this again? Or do you, do you have this fresh in your mind as well? No, I pretty much, you know, it, it's pretty much um, our, our process is very similar of how we, we typically generate our, our business. We, we kind of put people into an ad. We, we do an okay. The thing is, we're just not great at the quantitative process of the, you know, managing the numbers, right? Yep. Um, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to setting up the Google ads or setting up the um, retargeting and re, you know setting up that stuff and putting the pixels in place, I kind of have a good handle on on how to ultimately get the technology implemented into the the yeah. site. But managing it on a funnel basis, um, that's something we we have kind of struggled with a little bit. Uh, and you know, I, I'm I'm personally sick of the free solar ads, right? So I, I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but are, are uh, you but, doing? But, um, but we Google do something very Facebook? similar where we do definitely get the you know lead handling going. Where I'd like to see a lot of our prospects do a self schedule on on the website using like Calendly mm -hmm. or or something you know similar. Yeah. Um, and I've found that to be pretty uh, successful where people just self book, right? Yeah. I mean that's what we did, and uh, I think people are becoming more accustomed to that self booking process um on on the on the calendar and yes. it definitely shows intent right when they self book yeah uh what are you guys doing right now in terms of advertising is it some facebook and google or yeah mostly right? mostly facebook you know google um i'm I, I, sometimes i have a hard time giving google the keys to my bank account uh just because it can get um they can run away with the budget pretty quick for some reason. Uh, and that's probably one of the areas where we would rely on a, a professional to manage that. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you can put a bunch of banner ads and retargeting ads out there, but if they're not getting clicked on, uh, yeah. Or it's not, if it's not adding any value to your other marketing, um, it gets gotcha. expensive fast yeah. on a cost per lead basis. So the main lead generation channel right now is to get people through Facebook, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, um, whatever the, whatever the, you know, platform is that people's attention is on nowadays. Yeah. Do you know approximately how much you pay per lead and per appointment and so forth right now, uh, from the Facebook side of things? You know, we haven't been doing a lot of advertising recently, but it, it was in the range of somewhere for an appointment anywhere between, you know, 85 and $150 per appointment um, in that range. Yeah. Um, you know, and there was the occasion where it would crest up to 250 300 you know, for whatever reason. Um, yep. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, that's where things start to go sideways, right? Once the appointment costs start to go into the 250 to $500 range and there's no correlation to how it happened so um gotcha. we just don't have an agency you know level person in our you know employment currently right somebody yeah. who knows how to quantify those numbers gotcha uh, yeah but our solution is pretty like um, to the point we we mm -hmm. only focus on facebook and we do some retargeting on the google display network and so on uh, so on yep. forth as well um but the thing that we like to do differently with the Facebook ads is that we like to use real images of real people from within the business. So we don't like yes. to use like stock photos and so forth. Yeah. Uh, so, so we see better numbers from that and we build trust and authority and the brand and so forth as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we do all of the advertising under our client's brand and digital assets. So you guys own and control everything and we're just in there helping you guys essentially. Okay. Uh, and we also have full transparency with everything that we do. So when we onboard a new client, um, 
we do like an onboarding call, we extract everything that we need, we set everything up. And then before we go live, we record a video showing you everything. Here's what the ad's going to look like. Here's what the Atlantic page is mm-hmm. going to look like, so on and so forth. So the yeah. business owner always knows what's going on under the hood, essentially. Right. Um, we've also white labeled a, uh, a lead hunting service that we called homeservice.co and included in our software, we have, um, we have the booking capabilities. We build all of our landing pages in here. Uh, we have a solution very similar to Cadently as well. So we can not only generate leads, but book appointments to our clients as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So this kind of breaks it down. We have the team calendar in there. We also build automated follow-up and text email sequences for our clients that we custom build and custom mm-hmm. write. Uh, every message, one inbox, kind of similar to Podium, if you've heard about that. Um, right. Yeah. So you can cross uh, cross platform communication with the homeowner from one place. You can send it's text like a, and email. A, a developed project on like high level or something like that. Yes, exactly. It is high level. Yeah. And uh, we've just white labeled it with um, our brand, obviously. And we've also custom tailored everything specifically to our roofing clients, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's not mandatory to use, but uh, it's. Um, some of our clients have their own like Salesforce integration or HubSpot or whatever they use, then they can use right. that obviously. Um, but this is something that we offer and we can integrate this to, if they have a project management tool or whatever that might be mm-hmm. uh, in the roofing industry, they have like job Nimbus or active links, then we yeah. can get the two software to speak to each other and we can send the leads in between if they want to do that automatically. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, th- th- it's this is pretty much like the the core of what we do and what we offer. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, if, if there's anything in particular you want to discuss, like well, like re- questions regarding the ads or the funnel or scheduling page, we can do that now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the, um, ads that you've done for, uh, for PES or any of the other solar companies. Or I, I did notice that I, I did, when I saw their ads, I did notice that they did have more, um, PES branded advertisement, which I thought was, um, different than you know what you typically see in the solar ad industry where it's you know do you have an electric meter that looks like this click here to get you know more information um about this free program that doesn't exist do you um do you see yourself uh, or your partners are you guys building out you know other facebook um assets like a switch to solar kind of site that does get somebody's attention at least gets a click and then using that pixel to then retarget using the other you know ad is that something that you're doing or familiar with or recommend yeah i I know that some people do that that they do like a broad campaign just trying to get a ton of clicks and then they kind of retarget with people with a more uh, direct response ad where they try to get response or leads essentially yeah i I've tried that, but normally we just we just get the best results when we do a direct response ad right away. And yeah. we have certain like ad copy that uh, we know is working and we, we, we really like Florida. It's just a great state, to be honest. Mm-hmm. We see some of our best results in Florida. Yeah. Um, but we have some templates that we have for our clients. And But then also before we launch, we'll always work with our clients to see if they want to adjust it in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, the main thing with the copy is pretty straightforward. It's just like call out the homeowner make sure that they understand what the ad is about. And then we normally do like a value stack. So we can talk about the different benefits about the warranties or the financing or whatever it might be, or how much they can save or whatever it might be. Um, mm-hmm. And you can also twist it to, you know, you need to make the ad a little bit more interesting than just offering like a free home inspection or get a free estimate or something like that. So you can right. use like a special program or whatever now you want to do. Um, I know that you mentioned that previously as well. But then the the most important thing really when we do the ads is uh, really the creative. So having custom images. So mm-hmm. uh, from the company, normally photos with people work really well. And we have like, so yeah, every single time when onboarding a new client, we have a PDF of some of our best performing Im- images for our clients. And we can send yeah. that to our new client. And we basically ask them to take similar ones. You don't need like a professional agency to take like super professional branded videos like PES, PES does. That's something you can do in the future if you want to, but it's yeah. definitely not mandatory to get good results from Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of content of like drone footage of our in our systems and stuff like that. But I uh, I'm a big fan personally of the human based. Yes, you know, yeah. people sitting in their backyard having you know drinks, but their solar is on their roof kind of scenario. Yeah, um, and they don't yeah. even they're not like acknowledging that it's there. It's just a part of their life, you know. Yeah. 
normally those photos might work a lot better. It can be a simple photo like this one here as well. Worked really well. Just four guys standing, smiling into the camera. Worked really, really good. So it uh, doesn't have to be something super special most of the time. Yeah. Gotcha. Just a good offer with a good personalized image, essentially. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that that's super interesting. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do, uh, Max, it's a little bit different than what we've done in the past, is we're trying to generate, uh, I want to say, like, a lot more appointments <laughs> than we're traditionally used to. We're we're going to be scaling up pretty substantially uh, in over the next, I want to say, three to six months, um, where uh, we we really want to get to a point where we're closing um, somewhere in the range of two hundred to I want to say three hundred is our range new installs a month, and we're going to be doing that across four states, uh, at least three to start with, California, Texas, and Florida. And um, we don't want them all to be, you know, we don't want it heavily weighted on one state more than the other either. Uh, we have a, a pretty clear direction that we want to keep the sales pretty evenly spaced out between those three states and then adding Arizona and um, Nevada uh, probably in the beginning, uh, middle to the beginning of middle of Q1, beginning of Q2, uh, and then increasing the number of sales to somewhere in the range of 400 to 600 at that point. Um, and then going to close to a thousand by the end of Q4, 2023. Cool. Uh, yeah. And we typically run about a 20% to 23% close rate. So we would just need um, probably around 40 to 50% of our sales when we're at full scale coming from social media and, and whatnot. So yeah. um, to start with, I think we can get the the 150 to 200 in the next three months going with just social media alone um, in those two, in those three states. And we're going to have to build off of that going forward. Um, but we expect somewhere between like 40 and 60% of our uh, projects to come from these social media assets. And then the rest will come from additional offline and other aspects. Yeah. <clears throat> So that's kind of where we're at uh, and what we're looking to kind of do. Is that is that something that you guys are comfortable with at, at that scale? Yeah, for sure. Like always when we get people that want to spend more, we normally recommend that we start in smaller scale anyways mm -hmm. uh, regarding with the ad spend and we find something that works. We find like a proof of concept. And once we find that proof of concept, we can literally scale that how much we want to. Mm -hmm. Then it's worth mentioning as well that the different states are different. There's like different markets. You're going to be in different areas. So right. you yeah. So you kind of have to figure that out as well. But that's normally when you know, since we only work with the roofing and solar companies, we know already kind of what the targeting to do and the funnel and so forth. We have those variables in place. But always yeah. the, uh, the wild card is always the area. Uh, but um, but yeah, then it's basically just a re we process. We start with what we think will work in terms of ad copy. We can adjust it from your guys' request as well. We get the best ad copy that we can get together. We get the photos. Uh, we set everything up and we launch it. We start in in smaller scale. Once we find that when once we see that that works, then we can, then we can mm -hmm. scale it to how much you guys want to. Essentially, when you test an ad, what are you looking for in terms of is it going to scale? What what typically is your your trigger button where you're like okay. This ad, yeah, we need to put you know a lot of horsepower behind it. What what do you find is the you know the the key performance indicator or that that yeah. button that says this ad will will go versus spending you know ten thousand dollars on an ad that doesn't. Yeah, so if if we just begin backwards, it's like which ad or what campaign is getting the most leads and book calls? That's obviously the first thing. But then all, all other KPIs that we also look at is how much do we pay for the exposure on Facebook? Because we don't pay per click or anything, but we pay for the impressions on Facebook essentially. Okay. So, uh, so CPM, that's it's called yep. CPM, okay. uh, cost per mil. So we look at that. 
uh, is the is that good? The click through rate, how many people actually click on it? What do we pay per click? Uh, we also check. Also, what we test a lot is the conversion rates on the funnels. We A/B test the funnel all the time, and mm -hmm. if we have a conversion rate of like eight or nine percent when we start, and we can just get that up to like fifteen or twenty percent by just shifting an image on the landing page, then we've pretty much just doubled our amount of leads by just shifting mm -hmm. out an, an image on the landing page essentially. So normally. That's basically where we spend most of the time. And then also uh, testing images. Uh, images is normally like the biggest thing on Facebook ads because you can have, we always test the same ad copy. And then we have maybe 10 different images that we test. Mm -hmm. And then one image stands out for some reason. We don't know. People like it for some reason. They find it strange or appealing or like, uh, you know, interesting. Or um, So they click mostly on that one. And... Yeah, we start to find clues, what images works, what ad copy works, what type of landing page works, and then we just improve it over time, essentially. Yeah. So that's basically, gotcha. yeah. Do you have any clients that are spending, you know, 100,000 to 200,000 a month in their markets and seeing a substantial conversion rate? Not that much, no. Okay. It's pretty unusual for like local, a local business that want to spend that much. Uh, yeah. Normally it's like, you know, at most it's like twenty or like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per month, but hundred. What type of conversion are you seeing on, let's say, fifty thousand a month or thirty thousand, which is your average, right? Thirty thousand is your average. You mean in terms of ad spend per month? If they spend like thirty k a month? Yeah, like PES. They, I mean, you, they seem to be doing well in terms of their installations, right? I see. Uh, I get a report that shows me how many permits they pulled. So. Um, yeah. It, like, it seems like they're doing pretty okay. So, yeah, like yeah. Nolans, for example, they were spending fifty thousand dollars per month back in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, uh, and they were doing like team rated commercials, uh, a lot of home advisor and so forth. And then mm -hmm. with us, they spend around sixteen thousand dollars per month, and they were converting around forty percent of all leads into booked appointments. Then, okay, uh, which is not that bad. Obviously, can it can be a lot better. Uh, but then we have clients like. Um, yeah, we have Viking contractors, for example, mm -hmm. you know, 310 leads, they spent $8,000 within the first month or close to $8,000 yeah. and they got 310 leads, $25 per lead, 207, 267 verified booked appointments. And that's only the online calendar for $29 per appointment. So if they start to call the ones that didn't book online, they can yeah. get this number down even more. Um, gotcha. So yeah. yeah. So these are really good numbers, obviously. Uh, yeah. But even if we were paying like fifty or sixty or eighty dollars per lead, that or a pair of point month, rather, that's yep. uh, really good as well. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying is that these folks, like Viking, and um, there was another solar guy and whatnot, yep. you're you're using more of a direct campaign approach, a direct, hey, we are the contractor, we are going to help you with the solution to your problem that you've somehow discovered that you have. Um, and give us a call, right? Give us a shot at talking to you like a human being and, and we can help you. And you're seeing their booked appointments significantly probably higher than the folks that are doing the, hey, if you have an electric meter that looks like this, there's a program for you, right? That they probably realize that it's kind of like a scam once they fill in the information. Yeah, so like there, there's a thousand different ways of running ads and I'm constantly checking different ads and our copywriter do that as well, kind of different angles and we test it out and so on and so forth. We've yeah. just stuck with our methodology because we know that it works. However, yeah. like another thing and, and another thing that I'm very interested in that I actually don't have numbers on right now, but that I'm that I'm looking for and I know this is the case in e-com is that a lot of the people that see our direct ads don't go through our process as we want them to. Like this, mm -hmm. they see the ad, then they start to see the retargeting, but they, they might land on the landing page, but they don't go through and book. Instead, what they do is mm -hmm. they, they start to Google the business. They want to check the reviews. Uh, they want to go through web, through the website, go through their Instagram, check everything. And then mm -hmm. they call them via the phone on the website instead. Uh, and it's something crazy of like 80 to 90% of all the impressions you get, like don't go through the funnel, but they actually go through another way or call the right. business. Uh, so this is where what, tracking. What do you in. think? It, what do you think that what it attributes to that? You think in terms of the um, reason why they don't click through the funnel and they're they're going like a traditional route almost. 
in I terms would... of those buyers? What do you think they're? Yeah, I I guess they want to find like the best. <laughs> yeah. As as you know, when when they shop around for anything else, they just look around, look reviews everywhere, and kind of want to see what what they want to go for. So, uh, and what I wanted to get to as well is that that's why it can be very powerful if you have a huge spend on social media. Let's say that you're spending a portion of the budget where you do like direct ads and try to get people into the funnel. Yeah, you might also spend a bigger portion of the money just to pay as little pair impression as possible and just kind of get the brand out there to as many people as possible and try to hook them in essentially. And right. Because most people in the market are not ready to buy it right now, but in three or six months, they will. So then you want to be right. top of mind or yeah, follow that stuff. Yeah. Okay. And definitely cool. if, if there's going to be bigger ad spend, then I would definitely recommend to spend most of the money into a process like this, but also implement uh, more money into some type of branding and also spend if you're going to have a big advertising budget like that then you would definitely as well in in my uh, advice like spend a portion of that money into like hiring a professional video agency and get some like really really cool content like video and, and so forth created as well right you know, with PS did that, yeah hmm. okay that sounds good what else yeah, well, that's uh, that's basically it. Um, we can go through our offer as well and kind of how that works. Sure. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and also, yeah. So I just want to mention a couple of things first before I do that. So when we do these calls, we just want want to identify where does this business want to go to, where do they, where are they right now, where do they want to grow to essentially. And then the next question becomes, can we actually help them to get there? And we can just pinpoint to the work that we've done in the past. Uh, another question that people have is regarding time delay. So they wonder how much, how long is it going to take to get started, get everything set up and so forth. And uh, once we onboard a client, we get everything live within a week and we get uh, leads and booked appointments from day one once we start. Mm -hmm. um, and then effort and sacrifice. The only thing we ask for my clients is basically just to show up to the appointment or uh, call the incoming leads and show up <laughs> to the appointments. Right. And, uh, it's a done for you service, obviously. So we we do uh, we set everything up. The only thing that we ask for our clients to do is to get custom photos and so forth. Uh, yeah. That definitely helps. Um, and also, normally, what I mentioned here is regarding the um, the transparency, as I mentioned, that we show our clients mm -hmm. everything that we do before we launch, and also the um, yeah that you guys own and control all of the digital assets. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So just a simple value stack, what we include, we do the marketing campaigns management. So we manage that. We value that around $3,500 per month. Mm -hmm. We also have our, our software, our app that we white labeled. Uh, we also have our in-house copywriter, Gary, um, value him at around $2,000. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's worth a lot more, but that's his price. Uh, then we have our senior media buyer as well. That's Nicholas. So it's mostly me and Nicholas to do the media buying. Uh, and then we also have Henrik, who's also a media buyer, but he's mostly doing the funnel testing and so forth right now. Um, we also have access to a Facebook rep, and this is not something that you can buy, but that's something that you get over time, essentially, as you spend more time and money with Facebook and have more ad accounts and so forth. So if something gotcha. happens, you can just get access to the real support right away. <laughs> uh, we also have a bonus right now, so we can implement for our new clients if they want to do omni-channel brand retargeting, if they want to show up on all platforms, not only Facebook and Instagram and Google, that's something that we can help them with if they want to do like a YouTube retargeting campaign or LinkedIn or whatever it might be, TikTok. Uh, and then bonus number two, what we also do is that we do a 100% area exclusivity and an ROI guarantee. If we have some clients who overlap a little bit, we're not going to make a big deal out of that, but we don't want like 10 clients in the exact same area. Right. Um, we also have an ROI guarantee, and that is more so of a service-based guarantee. So we basically say that we ask for a four-month agreement, and if our clients haven't seen an ROI within the first four months, we're going to work for free until they do get an ROI, essentially. And we've been offering this since 2017, and we haven't had any of our clients use it, essentially, hmm. but we still throw it in there. Um, so it's a total value of almost $14,000 per month. Obviously, we're not charging $14,000 per month, but we charge two nine nine seven. This is for this is basically per area as well. So if you want to have multiple sure. areas, we would do like a deal per area, obviously. Uh, the ROI guaranteed included. We ask for a four-month agreement initially, then it's month to month. This is excluding the ad spend. And we also have a cap for 25 clients. I don't know if I mentioned that in the video, but we don't want to have too many clients. We'd rather have fewer clients that we work with um, that we can scale with, essentially. Gotcha. So yeah, that's basically it. 
Yeah, so it would be basically three grand a month for Florida, Texas, California. I mean, California is a pretty big area. It's like four states. Not to... <laughs> yeah, so 297 is like per area. So if you want to have like a bigger campaign in Florida, let's say we would count that as one campaign. But if you want to open up a completely new campaign in another area, then we would count that as a second campaign, essentially. But then we right. do a, a bundle. Is it by state or is it by like uh, DMA? Um, so it's like, we count it as one campaign. So if you have like zip codes in one area, mm -hmm. we would count that as a campaign. But if you have like one campaign in like Southern Florida, and then you want to open up completely new office and completely new, like launch in Northern Florida or in Central Florida, we would kind of count that as a, as a second campaign. Gotcha. Um, it depends on like how we can, how much work or how much testing is included in that second campaign. So, gotcha. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is there a um do you uh have like potentially a uh like a process that you would go through where you know we say hey look we're looking at the uh Dallas Dallas Fort Worth say DMA region and then California um a uh couple of locations there um, and work up like a work plan that says, hey, this is what we um, we think we can get in terms of leads and ad spend based on this ad spend. Is that something that you typically put together ahead of time? Um, I would say so. Like normally, like if we're going to do multiple areas, the, the easiest thing is always just to start with one essentially and we kind of find a proof of concept there. And mm -hmm. then like we, we can definitely put together like if an action plan kind of for different areas, but it's mostly going to be like this uh, that we have in the video as well. Um, again, like we know these variables that they work like across the nation, but it's always the market and the area that is the wild card. So right. if we would start in a new area, it would always be that we kind of, you know, we can test the ad copy that we know is working and the images that we know are working as well. And then do like the iterative process again to, Mm. Uh, to see how we can detect that specific market like yeah does does facebook have like a tool where you can, like you know how google has a tool based on keywords and and the amount you're going to spend um does facebook have a tool that you can kind of go in there and say hey look i'm going to spend this amount of dollars and i want to get this many impressions and i expect to get this click through do they have a sort of a, a, a planning tool that's a great question. And I don't think that they do, but I, I know these KPIs pretty much in my head. Um, so um, like when we, when we talk about impressions, um, normally we want to pay, you know, 20 to $30 per thousand impressions mm -hmm. and everything under that is really, really good, but that's normally our normal KPI. Um, and then like a click through rate of everything above like a 1% in click through rate is kind of where we want to be as well. Uh, so okay. we have some of those KPIs that I can send you if you want to, like some, like what we're looking for. And then out of that, you can just put a budget to it and kind of uh, plan it out very easily. Yeah, but, uh, no, that'd be helpful if you could send that over. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, a, it's something that I've kind of noticed is not necessarily a, um, it, it doesn't necessarily uh, pan out in terms of, uh, nobody seems to have a, a tool that they're using that kind of. No. Like Google has their click tool, right? Like their yeah. their keyword planner tool and whatnot. Yeah. And um, you know, you can kind of make some generalized uh assumptions based on on that. You know, if Definitely. you type in the word solar, you know, electricity, they kind of yeah. know that this is how many people search for that in this area yeah. in the last 90 days. Um I just haven't seen anything like that on on Facebook where, you know, you're able to kind of put in certain um, demographic information and it spits out, uh, yeah, these are the people that have actually, you know, sort of clicked on that kind of campaign in the last 90 days or, yeah. or, or an ad similar to this has been delivered to them and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I've been into SEO and, and the ad side of things quite a bit earlier. And it's very, you can do a ton of like market research on Google. You can like do the keyword research, see how many people search for the keywords. Mm -hmm. You can do like a competitor research and see 
you can get all of this data up front, how much you should pay per the click and what competition yeah. do you have on the search page and all of that. Really, the only thing you can get from Facebook is that you can see once you select your targeting, you can see like how many people live in that area. Um, right. That's really it. And because uh, it's not so that people are on Facebook searching for things, but it's just like they just hang around on the platform and we just want to get an ad in front of them. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can use tools like uh, like SEM Rush or yeah. you know Ace SpyFu Rush. and stuff like that. Um, yeah, to to kind of see what's going on there, but I, I just yeah. don't see anything like that with Facebook for some reason. No, yeah. All right, I guess, I guess it's because like it's a one Google is a search engine and Facebook is just like a platform where people hang out. So right, but, uh, it would, that would definitely be interesting. They had a. They had a tool kind of like that before on Facebook, but they removed it. And I think that was mm. because all of this privacy stuff that Facebook is going through. But uh, gotcha. yeah, you could kind of see different demographics and what groups people liked and so forth. But um, right. Yeah, you, that kind of went away. Yeah. Called the insight tool or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I guess it's better. I, I, I don't know if it's better or worse. I mean, you kind of, your, your newsfeed's kind of filled with ads now all day yeah. long. So it is kind of bizarre how, um, you know, I feel like TikTok, if you've ever scrolled through TikTok, they kind of figure out a way to like get ads into your newsfeed without it yeah. feeling <laughs> like yeah. an ad for some a lot reason. of influencers and stuff yeah yeah um so that's pretty interesting uh how that that is shaking out i just don't know how many people are actually using tiktok for any reason you know yeah I, I, tiktok is mostly younger people but i think it's starting to create like get older and older people on there on there as well mm -hmm. i haven't yeah. uh, run i have done some retargeting campaigns on tiktok but uh I haven't done like a cold campaign and I'm not sure if you can do a local campaign with TikTok. I've heard some people say that you can't, but it's more oh. sort of like a nationwide campaign where you, it's great for e-com and so forth. Uh, gotcha. But uh, but yeah, video is big and YouTube is uh, something that's very inter in interesting as well that a lot of businesses have, uh, have like dove into yet. Uh, we still stick yeah. to Facebook because we know that it works, but... Uh, if I would start a new agency from scratch, I would most likely look into YouTube quite a bit as well. Um, right. Yeah, we, I've heard a lot about, a lot of folks want to talk about uh, YouTube as well. Yeah. Uh, not too many agencies, though. I haven't really heard of an agency that has really figured it out, at least in our uh, space, that does it really, really well. Um, yeah, no, I haven't. Um, I mean, I see personally, like, if, if I open youtube like if i'm like how do i fix my whatever at my house which is yeah. pretty much all i ever use youtube for um it's just yeah. you know or how do i build an excel spreadsheet for you yeah. know how, what, how do i create this formula yeah um that's my stretch Very learning of, <laughs> yeah. of youtube but it's yeah. always you know the solar reviews guy right it's the, the bald solar review guy is always in my in my newsfeed or my pre-roll right yeah um and i just don't know uh i don't know how i don't know how people are using youtube that's my the consumer consumption of um youtube ads i just can't quite figure that one out uh now YouTube TV is really compelling to me i i just i yeah. i just subscribe to YouTube TV to see how that works um and it does seem like they have ads that do run on youtube tv but they're they're traditional commercials um hmm. but then there's spots where there's just blank spots where it says commercial break in progress okay so they've not sold an ad for that spot for some reason <laughs> i guess and I think it's because the, the ads have to be television quality. Okay. You know? So, I mean, you have, you have a lot of, um, but I have a feeling that, that the space on YouTube TV, the, the actual, um, 
you know, the amount of space that's there is probably inexpensive right now because of the fact that no one is advertising on it. Hmm. Uh, so, so YouTube TV, it's not like the normal YouTube platform without advertisements, but it's something else. Then I yeah, it's I like television. It actually. It's like cancel okay. your cable. Um, really? Cancel your cable subscription and then you type in whatever zip code you live in and it gives you all your local channels. And it's like 50 bucks a month. Uh, $54 hmm. a month and you get, you know, all your traditional channels like you would if you oh, had nice. a cable subscription. Um, so I think it's a, a lot, a lot of people who have, uh, you know, high speed internet and they've kind of ditched the cable provider will yeah. go to YouTube TV. And now you have say a $55 a month, $60 a month, um, high speed internet subscription. And then you can have your $50 a month YouTube and you've cut your cable bill in a third. Right. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. And, They're taking over. And, and there's no, uh, there's no commitment to stay on like there is your cable subscription. Yeah. Right. So you can, hey, I'm going to go ahead and get YouTube TV for a month and then I'm going to cancel it next month. Uh, mm. You can kind of get on and off pretty easily. Cool. I haven't heard about that actually. Yeah, uh, I, I think more people are starting to go that way with their over-the-air kind of subscriptions. Um, yeah, even even with like HBO, I think HBO Max has a uh, like a They're with ads. They're disappearing now, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, I think Netflix is now starting to offer some kind of ad service as well oh, for it's... like a instead of paying fifteen ninety nine for a service without ads, I think they're going to go with a a smaller service with ads which i would i would say that's going to be the holy grail at some point because everybody's watching stuff on netflix you know yeah. that's a it's an obvious obvious solution so um yeah i heard something about netflix as well that like the quality of videos are actually becoming worse because the business model when you do netflix is not what it was when you mm -hmm. can like sell dvds and so forth afterwards so yeah the quality of videos are actually becoming a bit lower because they have to stream everything. So who knows? Yeah. All that uh, business, but I mean, that's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, I'm sure there's a different, you know, process for making your ads for uh, a, a, uh, like a TV quality ad. I'm sure you have yeah. to get a, a legitimate per, a little legitimate camera crew in there. Yeah. um great no this is helpful right. uh yeah yeah any any follow-up information you can send over would be great um i'm going to run this uh by our partners and uh you know i think that three-month commitment is fair right that makes sense um and um yeah sounds, sounds good. Pretty good let's do this i can start an uh an email conversation and we can just keep the conversation going there or an email thread rather and i can send yep. you the, this recording obviously I can send you some like KPIs on Facebook and I can That'd also send you our image PDF kind of see what images we use normally use. So you can get sure. that. That and, sounds great. Uh, then we can just take it from there essentially. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Max. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Likewise. Okay. Take, take care. care. Bye. All right, so that is basically the sales call. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, and if you wanna learn more about sales and how to do sales calls specifically for a social media marketing agency, I have a 100% free social media marketing agency course where I teach people to go from zero to at least $10,000 per month completely for free. It's a free SMMA course. You don't even have to opt in with your email. We also have a free community and free weekly Q&A calls and free live streams every single week. So that's it. Leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below as well if you enjoy videos like this. And if I get a lot of the feedback regarding these sales calls. I will definitely record more of them and post more of them. But that's it for now. Hope to see you in the next video or in the free social media marketing agency course. Let's go.